workflow class. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to make scale drawings by using the ratio method. First, I'd like you to write down your own definition of the word dilation. Uh, you've learned this before in mathematics. Let's uh, do a little refresher. So there's an example of one. How would you define a dilation? So here's a little fair model for the word dilation. So it has a center of dilation and a scale factor. And to use function notation, we can use a capital D. And the two parameters are the center and the scale factor. And if you're doing a dilation, to find out where the uh, point is in the image, you take the distance from the center to the point in the pre-image. You're going to multiply that distance by your scale factor, r. And then that's going to be the distance from your center to the corresponding point in the image. In mathematics, we use the absolute value symbols to signify a distance. So that's all we're talking about here. Uh, we know that dilations preserve angles. And unless you're doing an identity transformation, the rigid motions are not examples of dilations. The rigid motions always preserve uh, distance and uh, angle measurements. But dilations, unless it's the identity dilation, the uh, dis distance is not preserved. Let's go through some properties. How do you figure out the distance that you move given uh, points? That's going to be the scale factor. And what property do we know about the scale factor if you're pulling a point towards the center? We know that we have a reduction, so the scale factor is between 0 and 1. What do we know if the, about the scale factor if we push all the points away from the center, except for the center? And we know that, that that's an enlargement, so the scale factor is greater than 1. And any point that's invariant, you know the scale factor has to be exactly 1 because the distance isn't changing. And scale factor, we only talk about positive scale factors. Right? Negative scale factors would mean we have negative distance, and that doesn't make any sense. So scale factor is always going to be a positive. So how do we actually do a, uh, I mean, how do we actually apply the ratio method, method to, uh, to a figure? So we have a center here. This little picture of a little house. We have center O, and the scale factor is 1 half. So what should happen to the image after the dilation? Well, it should be smaller, because it is a reduction, right? The scale factor is between 0 and 1. So how do we do that? Well, one way, if you don't want to use the compass, the ratio method involves, um, you can use the ratio method, and that involves measuring distances. So first thing you do is you draw a ray from the center through each point that you're going to uh, supply the dilation to. You pick all the vertices. Now, to figure out where the points in the image are, you measure those distances, and you multiply them by your scale factor. So here, the distance is 7. So I make a little chart. OA is 7 centimeters. So if I multiply uh, that distance OA by R, the scale factor, that's 1 half times 7, that's 3.5 centimeters. So I'm going to put my point right here at 3.5, and that is A prime. Let's do the same thing for B. Measure this, the distance from your center to that point. That's 10 centimeters, and 1 half of 10 is 5. So B prime is going to be located 5 centimeters on that ray from the center. And you repeat that process for all your other points. So in your diagram, your notes, your picture uh, is probably a different size, so you won't have my exact numbers, but you should have the exact same, uh, same idea, the same process should be in your notes. So in my picture, these are my other uh, numbers, and they're what you'd expect. Every number on the right is half of the number on the left. And so if I plot all those points, I end up with this. And then you connect your vertices so that it looks like the original figure. And so here we have our scale drawing. And how we know it's a scale drawing? Well, we learned in the previous lesson that all of the sides should be proportional, and all of the corresponding angles uh, should be equal in measure. So this reduction 
is also a scale drawing. And we can verify that. And the scale factors are equal. The scale factor of the scale drawing is going to be the same as the scale factor of your dilation. And to verify that, you measure all the angles. We end up with four 90 degree angles in each, in each square here. And then in the triangle, we end up with 80 degrees at D and D prime. And that's uh, angle DCE and DEC. We get 50 degrees. And those are the same in each figure. And if we measure the distances here, we have AB is 3 centimeters. And AB prime is 1.5 centimeters. If I can get that right. So here we go. All of the corresponding lengths in the image are one half of the lengths in the pre image. So this is a scale drawing. Let's do the same, but now the scale factor is four. I'm sorry, scale factor is three. R equals three. So we're going to do the same process. You're going to draw rays from your center through each vertex. And think about where your image is going to be. Is this an enlargement or a reduction? It's an enlargement since the scale factor is bigger than one. So we know that our image is going to be somewhere up here. So here are all my rays. And we're going to do the same process as before. We're going to figure out how far each vertex is from the center of dilation, and then multiply that distance by the scale factor of 3. So for example, the distance from O to A in my diagram is 2.5 centimeters. So I'll multiply that by 3. Let's see if I got that right in the center. Multiply that by 3. And we get 7.5 centimeters. And so we repeat that for the other ones. Let's uh, graph it first. So A prime is going to be 7.5 centimeters from that center. Let's go right here and label that A prime. And it's the same process for the other vertices. From A to B is 3 centimeters. Just a little bit off. I'm sorry, from O to B, our center O is 3 centimeters. And multiply it by 3, and we get 9. And here are my other uh, measurements. And so if you plot all those, we end up with this. Here are the locations of all the points in the image, the vertices in the image. And now we just have to connect the points so that we get an image that corresponds to the original. So here's what it looks like. So the scale drawing looks like one. To verify, we can measure again. We can measure those angles. We get these measurements, and all the corresponding ones have the same measures. And all the sides in the image are three times the length of the sides in the pre-image. So I'd like you to take a moment to put in your notes, in your own words, how you make a scale drawing with the ratio method. So be as precise as you can, and I'll show you my solution. So here's one way you could have described it. Hopefully, your uh, answer is very similar to the steps shown. So now we already have a scale drawing. How do we figure out where the center is, and how do we find the scale factor? Well, to find the center, we know that each point is mapped to its corresponding point in the image by moving along a ray that emanates from the center. So if we draw lines, through all of the corresponding points, they should intersect at the center of dilation. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to connect A prime to A, B prime to B, and C prime to C. That line should go through the same center. There we go. So here is our center O. Let's see. Looks like that. OK, and to find the scale factor, we have to divide the distance, or a distance. I mean, there's multiple ways to do this. One way is to go from the center to a point in the image. And you're going to divide that distance by the distance from the center to the corresponding point in the pre-image. So for example, if we go from the center to a prime, 
we have 9 centimeters. And the distance from O to A is 5.5 centimeters. So the scale factor is going to be 9 divided by 5.5, which is 1.63, and the 6 is repeating. So let's apply what we learned to uh, the commercial sector. So we want to, this company wants to put the statue of liberty space on a t-shirt. And it wants to make it so that we have a nice dilation, so it's still well, uh, well scaled. So what different shapes could we use to model the face? Well, we could go with any of, the, any of these shapes, really. Any of these polygons will work. I would go with a rectangle, because uh, it already looks like this picture is kind of rectangular. But you could still scale to uh, different shapes. And let's see, we know the maximum width of the t-shirt is 20 inches. What scale factor would we have to use on the width here to make it so that, that width-wise it'll fit on the shirt? So we know that in the image, it's going to be 20 inches. We have to make sure our units line up so that the units cancel out. What is the width of the Statue of Liberty's actual face? Well, it's 10 feet. And in inches, that will be 120 inches. So this is going to be 20 over 120, which is 1 sixth, which is 0 0.16, 6 is 6, right? Uh, that 6 repeats. So that would have to be the scale factor. So if that's the scale factor, what would the corresponding length be? So here are the dimensions we have of the t-shirt. This is the space we have for the length. Now if we use 1 sixth on that height right here, the height of the face, or length of the face, what would we get? Well, it would be 1 sixth times 17 feet, but we want to convert it to inches. So 17 feet to inches is, I'm sorry, skip the spot. Skip the spot. We want to uh, make sure that our scale factor is 1 sixth as well, so it's well uh, well scaled, right? If we use a different scale factor, it's going to look squished. So we multiply by 1 sixth. 1 sixth times 204, which is 17 times 12, is 34. So will that fit on the shirt? You know that the length of the shirt we have is 29 inches. No, 34 is too big. So we can't scale using the width. We have to scale using the length then. OK, what scale factor will we use? to make it fit lengthwise. So that would be 29 inches divided by 204 inches, right? 17 times 12. And you get this uh, decimal. About one, uh, 0 0.142, dot, dot, right? So that would be our scale factor. And if you apply that same scale factor to the width, you get 17.058 dot, dot, inches. So it'll fit on the shirt. Because 17, that number right there, about 17, is less than or equal to 29. And so finally, if those are our dimensions, and it costs $0.005 for each square inch, how much will it cost to print a face on a t-shirt? Well, we've got to find square inches, so that's the area. So we're going to multiply that 20 inches, I'm sorry, not 20 inches, the 29 inches of our length, times this amount, the 17.058. Multiply those two quantities to find the area. And then multiply the area by $0.005 to figure out the cost. So there we go, about $2.47 per share. In this lesson, we learned how to use the ratio method to make scale drawings. Here's a little overview of what we learned in the lesson. Thanks for watching this video.